Hi there, and welcome to lesson 1.6 for pre-calculus. I am going to jump right into this lesson. We've got a lot of information to cover. We are going to be figuring out all different types of functions and their characteristics. So the first function, you guys know this, it's a linear function. There are two basic types of linear functions. One is a constant function, and this is just going to be where y equals a number. So any constant that you can think of, this will always be a horizontal line because it is just the line y equals a number. So for example, the line y equals 3 would be the line going through here, and that would be a constant function. We also have an identity function. That is the line y equals x, and that's this dotted line right here. Now linear functions can take on many different forms, and so we have the standard form, also known as the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. You have your general form, ax plus by plus c. We've seen other ways to find equations of a line as well. So as you're taking notes, there's going to be a lot of information to write down. You're going to want to write down the key points, and I know it's going to be a lot of writing today, so I apologize for that. But we've got your standard form and your general form of the equation of the line. Definitely make sure you know those for your linear functions. Remember, we've talked about domain a lot. There is nothing special going on with a line. We don't have a fraction, we don't have a square root, so our domain is going to be the set of all real numbers. Similarly, our range will also be the set of all real numbers. You guys know this, your y-intercept is 0 comma b when you've got it in the y equals mx plus b form. Your x-intercept, not usually found as much, so you don't need to really worry about that, but you can find it by using your standard form of the equation and taking negative b, dividing it by m. Good to know about a line, it's always increasing if your slope is positive, and it's decreasing if your slope is negative. Okay, let's move on to the next function, and I'm going to start moving through these pretty quickly here. Next function is your absolute function. You guys know this, the absolute value of x. That's a basic absolute function. So the graph down here, this would be a basic absolute value function, and you can see this is the function f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2. The unique characteristics about absolute value functions is they're going to have these sharp changes of directions. It's going to be basically like it bounces. So here we're decreasing, 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 and then at a single point, now this function's going up. Same thing here. We go here, and then all of a sudden, at an instant, it changes direction. That's how you know if it's an absolute value function based on the graph. So you also know it's an absolute value function based on the equation if you just see these straight lines right here. So if you have single brackets like this, straight up and down, you guys are familiar with that. You know that you've got an absolute value function. Pretty easy to identify, both graphically and by the equation. Your domain will be all real numbers. We don't have anything special going on with this function. Your range will probably be most likely that all real numbers greater than or equal to zero for y. And then you know how to find your x and your y intercepts. Set your y equal to zero and solve for your x-intercept, set x equal to 0, and solve for your y-intercept. Okay, moving on to the next slide. A quadratic function, the book also refers to this sometimes as a squaring function, but you guys know this as a quadratic equation or a quadratic function. For it to be a quadratic function, it has to be in the form of y equals x squared. So the y cannot be the squared here. Your basic form is y equals x squared. General form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. The standard form right here, this is your most useful form because this will give you your vertex. So your standard form of the equation of a quadratic equation is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k, where these are just constants. a, h, and k are just different constants. In general, it's a u-shaped curve, and again, our domain, we don't have a fraction, we don't have a square root, so our domain is all real numbers. The range, you don't need to worry about this so much, but in general, if your A is positive, your range will be everything above that vertex, so whatever that lowest point is and everything above it. If A is negative, then you're going to have an upside-down parabola like this. 
and then your range will be all real numbers less than or equal to your vertex. Your vertex can be found through the following point, h comma k, and again that's going to come from your standard form right here. In general, the symmetry of a quadratic equation or function is going to have y symmetry. It could be the y-axis if your vertex is at 0, 0, but regardless, it will always be wherever your vertex is, your x-coordinate of your vertex will be your y-symmetry. So that's why we have this right here. It will be x equals h, whatever that x-coordinate is of your vertex. Okay, moving on. We've got a cubic function. A cubic function is just that. The highest variable that you've got will be cubed, and that's why it's named cubic function. So, we've got the general form, or basic form, y equals x cubed. The general form can get a little bit more complicated. You can have ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Your domain will always be all real numbers, your range will also be all real numbers. And you can see from this graph, this can go all the way up to infinity, down to negative infinity, and there isn't any, there are not any holes in it. Symmetry, sometimes you can have the origin, but not always. So this function can be both increasing and decreasing. So we see here, it increases all the way up to here, now it's starting to decrease. Our y values are going lower again, and now all of a sudden our y values are going up. Your y-intercept, all you're going to do is plug in 0 here. Plug in 0 for your x, and it's just y equals d. So your y-intercept is pretty easy. X-intercepts you're not really going to have to find very often, but they would be the factors of this cubic equation. So you'd have to factor the whole entire thing out. Okay, next one. Square root function. You guys are familiar with this. We've been dealing with the domain for quite some time now. Your basic form of a square root function is y equals the square root of x. Square root functions have this interesting graph where it's almost like a half a parabola. So on this particular one, it starts at zero and it increases. It kind of looks like half of a parabola. Your general form is going to be y equals a times the square root of x minus h and then plus k. Your domain, we've done this. You set whatever's inside here to greater than or equal to zero. So that's how you find your domain. Your range will just be greater than or equal to whatever's outside the square root. We don't need to worry too much about this, but the h tells you how much it's shifting over, so how much it's shifting left or right, so right here. Your k tells you how much it's shifting up or down. And in general, it will be increasing if a is positive, or it'll be decreasing. A decreasing function could look something like this. And that would be if a is a negative number. So if your square root is negative, then you have a decreasing function. All right, I hope you guys are hanging in there. I know this is a lot of information. Reciprocal function. It's also known as the inverse. So your reciprocal function is just that. You are taking the reciprocal of whatever equation you have. So your basic form is just going to be 1 over x. Your general form, so if you start out with f of x, your inverse will be 1 over that whole entire equation. So anytime you see 1 over something, you have a reciprocal function. We've been dealing with fractions in the domain, so remember you just don't want your denominator equal to zero. And in the graph of a reciprocal function, you're going to kind of get these mirror images of each other. If you have a mirror image like this, then you know you've got a reciprocal or an inverse function. And on the notes quiz tomorrow, I may give you a graph and you're going to have to figure out what type of function it is based on the graph, so you'll have to name it. So. For example, the square root function that you saw on the previous slide, I can show you the graph of that and you have to tell me that it is a square root function, or like this, an inverse function. One thing to note about reciprocals is that the bigger your y value is of that function, of the original, the smaller your reciprocal will be. So that's why it's the reciprocal. So think about it, if you had just a regular function, f of x, 
Let's say f of x equals 1,000. That's a large number. Our reciprocal of that is 1 over f of x. And that's going to equal 1 over 1,000. That's a very small number. So the larger your f of x value is, the smaller your reciprocal will be, and vice versa. The smaller your reciprocal, or the smaller your f of x, the larger your reciprocal will be. Okay, moving on. Stepwise and piece functions. Piecewise, stepwise and piecewise functions. So here, you're gonna have functions that jump. You're gonna have these spaces, these holes in the functions. Right off the bat, you'll know it's either a step or a piecewise function. Step functions are gonna take this form y equals, and it's these double brackets, x. What this means is you take what's ever inside these double brackets and you round it down to the next integer, the next greatest integer. So for example, let's say we had an equation that looked like this, y equals y equals double brackets 1 half x. So if we were to put 1 in for x, we would get y equals, and you keep the double brackets, 1 half times 1 is 1 half. These double brackets mean you just round down to the integer. So rounding down, our answer would be 0. So you would plot this point as 0. So you'd have the point 1 half comma 0. You just round down. Anytime you see this, round whatever you get inside those brackets, round it down. And you're going to get these steps that look like this. So that's why it's called a step function. Piecewise functions, we've already talked about those in earlier in class. You're going to have these multiple equations defined over intervals. And you might have possible jumps in the equation just like this. And that will be a piecewise function. So usually, in both of these, your domain is going to be all real numbers. Your range is going to be all real numbers because there are special functions that they're wanting to make sure everything is covered. The, con the graph will be constant and a step function. You're going to get these hor horizontal lines. And in a piecewise function, you're going to have multiple functions defined or multiple equations defining that function. Okay, I know that was a lot of information, a lot of data thrown at you. Hopefully it didn't take too long with pausing. Um, Look forward to seeing you guys all in class and have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.